When they initially announced that they were doing a second Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix returning as Joker, and this time it was going to be a musical with Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn, I thought, oh yeah, this is going to be huge. This is going to be another hit. This is going to be a billion dollar movie. The first movie was immediately iconic. It completely redefined the character. There is a whole generation of people that really believe that Joaquin Phoenix is the best Joker. And then you're adding Lady Gaga. People love Lady Gaga. Bad romance. It's definitely going to be a hit. And then the movie comes out and it's not a hit. <laughs> it's not a hit at all. And I saw that and I said, I got to see it. I have to see this movie and I got to make a video about it. I went and saw the movie and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. It's bad. I've always had an affinity in my heart for the Joker character. I genuinely think it's one of the best characters, not just in comic books, but in fiction. A bunch of guys nearly a hundred years ago saw Batman. This really serious, really dour, traumatized billionaire that dresses up as a bat and drives around at night fighting crime and thought, you know who his number one villain should be? You know who his biggest adversary should be? The one who's constantly outwitting and outsmarting him? The one who he's sworn to defeat? An insane person that dresses up like a clown. And we believe it because that character is so damn good. And the fact that the Joker has gotten to the point where he is just as iconic as Batman. No other superhero has a villain, I think, that comes anywhere near Joker. Maybe Lex Luthor, I don't know. But Joker's the most iconic superhero villain ever. And he has the most iconic superhero villain performance. Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. Heath Ledger is still the best Joker. Heath Ledger is easily the best Joker. I don't care how many Oscars these other niggas win, Heath Ledger will forever be the best Joker. It's like Michael Jordan to old heads. He's always gonna be my GOAT. Heath Ledger's gonna be my GOAT forever. No matter what you niggas do, I don't care. After Heath Ledger's Joker, I thought they're never doing another live action Joker. But we live under capitalism. So we got Jared Leto's Joker. Let's not spend too much time on that. Let's move on from that. After Jared Leto flamed out, I thought, okay, now they're done. Now they're done with the Joker. And then they announced that they were doing an entire movie about just the Joker starring Joaquin Phoenix. When I first heard that they were doing a Joker movie way back in 2018, 2017, I don't know. I thought this is just another ploy for more money. There's no art in this whatsoever. Keith Ledger has already made that role cursed, but they had to try, you know, because money. The first Joker movie was a phenomenon. It was undeniable. I didn't much care for it. I think everyone was being really annoying about it, both sides, both the people who despised it and thought it was garbage and the people who loved it and thought it was a masterpiece. Both sides of the argument were really annoying to me. That movie is not that good. It's not that bad. It's not that good. It's just all right. Joaquin Phoenix's performance is quite good, and I'm not that mad at the Oscar win. But people act like it's either a masterpiece or it's terrible. It's just in the middle, and it happened to gross a billion dollars, and it happened to become a lightning rod for controversy and conversation. When they announced the sequel to Joker 2019, I thought, okay, let's have some fun with the character now. Now that he's Joker, now that he's fully become Joker, now that we've seen his journey, let's see what Joker looks like operating in this really seedy, 70s, grimy ass world. Joker 2 Folia Adu said, fuck that. We're not doing any of that shit. When I first saw Joker, when I saw you and Murray Franklin, the whole time I was watching, I kept thinking, I hope this guy blows his brains out. Joker 2 Folia Adu, Folia Adu, Joker 2 Folia Adu takes place two years after the events of Joker 2019. Arthur's been in prison for two years. 
and his trial is coming up. He's on trial, of course, for what he did in Joker 1, killing all those people, killing those finance guys, killing Robert De Niro's Murray. And while he's in prison, he meets Harleen Quinzel, Lady Gaga's character. And immediately, they're in love. It's love at first sight. The entire movie is Arthur defending himself against his actions in Joker, the original movie. And it's not good. It's not good. I don't like this movie at all. It's insufferable. This movie is a bad courtroom drama. This movie is a bad musical. This movie is a bad comic book movie. It's bad in so many different innovative ways. All this movie does the entire time is relitigate the events of the first movie. And the Harley Quinn character is sort of a stand-in for the fans who loved the first movie and made a hero out of the Joker and what he did. And the movie is effectively saying, fuck you to those people. The movie is saying, you fucking suck. You fucking idiots. Why the fuck do you like this guy? Why do you think this guy is interesting at all? And the musical element of this movie. I don't even really know what to make of it. I don't know why they did it at all. I'm a theater kid. I like musicals. I'm sorry. And the number one rule of musicals is a character sings when words no longer service their wants. They sing to get what they want. They sing to advance the story. All the good musicals, the songs are integral to telling the story. You could literally remove every single musical number from this movie and nothing would change. There would be no difference. It would definitely be less entertaining than it already is. The musical numbers are the one source of fun in this movie. And even they are boringly and uninspiringly directed. Todd Phillips clearly has no idea how to direct a musical number in an interesting way. There's a couple musical numbers where the camera just goes around the room <laughs> and follows the character awkwardly singing. Lady Gaga maybe gets one moment when she really gets to belt and show off. And besides that, she's made to sing in this really weird, really whispery way. You could take Lady Gaga out of this movie and it would barely change at all. She, she makes no impact on this movie whatsoever. It's like they don't know anything about the character Harley Quinn. The one part when Joaquin Phoenix gets to really be Joker, gets to really ham it up. It's probably the best part of the movie when he's uh, cross-examining the little person that he spared in the first movie after murdering the bigger bully clown. I could have used more of that part of the movie. That specific scene had everything we liked about the first movie. Had a little humor, a little comedy, also had a little pathos in the little person, Mr. Puddles. He got to actually defend himself and call out Arthur for traumatizing him in the first movie. That was a good moment. That was fun. That was good. And Joaquin Phoenix was being Joker and it was really, really, really interesting. And I thought, oh, is the rest of the movie just gonna be him defending himself? But no, no, he rests his defense then. And when his final arguments come towards the end of the movie and he has to defend himself, defend himself in front of the prosecution, which I forget to mention is Harvey Dent. It's Harvey Dent. I mean, you know who that is, right? You, you get it. Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent. Lawyer guy. Batman. Lawyer guy. Gotham City. You get it? That's, that's really the one comic book thing in this movie besides Harley Quinn. There's no other comic book stuff in this movie whatsoever. This movie hates, hates comic books. And it's a comic book movie. Towards the end of the movie, in his final argument, Joker has a chance to defend himself. But in an interesting twist, Arthur comes through and owns up to all the violence he committed in the first movie. He says there's no Joker. There never was. Much to the chagrin of his fans, namely Harley Quinn, who just walks out of the courtroom. Another interesting moment in an otherwise dull an uninteresting movie. And then there's an explosion. And you think, oh yeah, that's Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn's finally coming through. She's going to, she's going to take up the mantle and she's going to make Joker be Joker. 
But no, she had nothing to do with the explosion. It was just some random fans that had nothing to do with the movie whatsoever. The big question of the movie is supposed to be, where does Joker end and where does Arthur Fleck begin? But it's so underdeveloped. It's so underwhelmingly developed and it's haphazard and slapdash. Lady Gaga's character is supposed to be the crux of this movie. She's supposed to be the moral center of this movie. She's supposed to be the one that is in between the two sides. Simply developing that character in the slightest way would make this movie infinitely better. Genuinely developing this character, besides having her sing a bunch, would make this movie so much better. But instead, she just sits in the courtroom and they cut to a bunch of meaningless musical numbers that have nothing to do with the plot. This movie is bad in so many different ways. It's honestly impressive how bad it is. The people who made this movie don't like the Joker. They don't like comic book movies. They don't like superheroes. That is my theory. That is what I'm assuming. This movie is so bitter and negative and without any sort of joy. No way the people who made this movie like Joker. In the first movie, they tried to get around making a comic book movie. They said, oh yeah, let's make Taxi Driver, but he dresses up like a clown. This movie is made by people who don't like comic book movies. And you gotta wonder, why did they make this movie? And why did they make it a musical? Genuinely, what are we saying about the character Joker by making it a musical? Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn could have been something interesting, but no, no, she was just a stand-in for annoying fanboy culture. You used her to make a point. She's not a character, she's an idea. She's a manic pixie dream girl. This movie was trying to get me to not like it. And I'm not saying movies have to be entertaining. This movie was not entertaining, but it had no point to make about anything besides the Joker character. The entire message of this movie is, why do you like the Joker? Why do you think the Joker is cool? You could maybe extrapolate something about hero worship. You could maybe make it about a messianic figure. I don't know. At the end of the day, it's just, y'all weren't supposed to react like that The Joker 2019. Arthur Fleck is Travis Bickle. You're not supposed to like him. And the thing about it is, he's never really alluring in the movie at all. In screenwriting, you're supposed to do this thing. You're supposed to have a setup and then a punchline. It's a joke. There's no setup in this movie. It's the entire movie is just punchline. There's no moment where, okay, we're lured into Joker's trap. We're lured into loving the Joker again. The one moment when Joker is joyous is maybe five minutes. There's no moment when we say, okay, I see where Joker's coming from. I see why people are entrapped by him. It's just boring. This movie needed setup for when the actual good moments of Arthur Fleck choosing to own up to the murders and Lady Gaga walking away, those actually have some thematic heft. This movie is so one noted the entire time that the end you're just left empty. You don't learn anything. This movie wants you to learn something. It clearly has a message. The way it delivers it is so ineffective and boring that in the end when you're watching Arthur writhe around, covered in blood, dying, you don't care. <laughs> you don't really care. And maybe that was the point. Maybe what the point was to get us to stop caring, stop liking Joker. I don't know why you make a movie like that, but okay. Man, I gotta make a I gotta make a video about a good movie. This shit is so sad.